I'm Cody Jarrett, and I'm the SRE lead here at Q2. I've been with the company for about six years now, and I work on the team that's responsible for our architecture and operations of the orchestrator and distributed systems platforms at Q2. Today I'll be talking about why Q2 is using Nomad, and we'll dive into our environment to discuss how we use the tools, and finally we'll share some of our best practices that we follow. So who is Q2? We provide a comprehensive digital banking solution, which includes account openings, digital online banking, lending solutions, fraud protection, and really a lot more. We enable financial institutions to provide rich, data-driven experiences to every account holder. And we meet the needs of consumer banking, small business and corporate banking, and even fintech companies. And to kind of show our scale, one in 10 online banking users in the US uses Q2. $2.6 million uh, worth of money movement flows across our platform every minute, or about $1.5 trillion annually. 33% of the top 100 US banks are Q2 customers. And most of this activity is happening within applications that are running on top of Nomad. So getting into our Nomad usage, let's talk about where we were about three years ago. What problems did we really need to solve? Back in the 2016, 2017 timeframe, our applications were running in very uh, a sort of dated monolithic style. There was a lot of manual and really tedious work that was involved in deploying and upgrading our applications. There was a high potential for mistakes as well. A lot of care and feeding to maintain apps after they were deployed and ran uh, took place. So managing the life cycle was often really painful and uh, just ensuring that the app stayed running took a lot of time. People responded to alerts and restarted the services by hand. Introducing new changes across the entire environment was nearly impossible and super risky. If we wanted to mass roll out changes to all customers at the same time, it took a lot of planning and work and had a, a really high level of risk. It was very difficult to roll back changes after deployments. It was, very, it was a very manual task that involved a lot of unwinding um, of the pieces of the application that were changed. And really, we needed a better way to scale out the environments to enable faster changes and self-service. It was pretty clear we needed to overhaul as we continue to scale. While evaluating solutions in the path forward, there were several important considerations that really had to be met. First, a large portion of our application is Windows-based. Our core business logic, for example, runs in IIS. So we really needed to have Windows and Linux support. Although we do prefer running containers, uh, we didn't necessarily want a hard requirement to have to use them. We liked the idea of being able to run apps directly on VMs if the use case called for it. We wanted to begin using workload orchestration for our current applications but also be able to support the future. We wanted to make improvements to workflows without massive and time-consuming rewrites of our existing applications. Because of the industry we're in, security and compliance enforcement was extremely critical. Finally, we needed the, the solution to be simple and easy to use and maintain. We evaluated several of the major orchestrators and ultimately, we chose Nomad because it met all of our requirements and made the most sense in our environment. Let's talk about some of the outcomes we've been able to achieve with Nomad. We've been able to increase deployment rates across the board. Since, deploy since deployments are much simpler, it's become much easier to stand up applications, which has allowed for better testing and experimentation and easier changes in general. Deployments and changes have a better history as well for auditing purposes. We gained a lot of extra resiliency for our production stacks as well. One way we did this was by preventing single points of failure within application stacks and ensuring that multiple copies are running all at the same time. So Nomad automatically ensures the services stay running, healthy, and handles VM failures and maintenance events for us. Our customers expect extremely secure and compliant environments, and Nomad's really helping us achieve that. We've been able to improve and enforce standards around all of our applications. 
app stacks are defined as code now and version controlled and go through peer review process. We've been able to funnel changes through automation tools to enforce standards. Tools like Sentinel, for example. Sentinel's allowed us to enforce uh, allowed drivers, allowed services, and, and standard config options within jobs. It's also allowed us to, to uh, specify minimum and maximum uh, resource standards as well. Access to manage and deploy jobs is tightly controlled using Nomad ACLs and Vault. This means that changes have an audit trail and secrets may have once existed in config files, now have been moved to Vault. Nomad and Vault both have audit logging capabilities, and that really lets you have a better understanding of actions that take place in the environment and something that we use heavily. And really, this is one of the biggest wins we achieved with Nomad. We were able to move our existing application workloads into Nomad without costly, time-consuming application rewrites. This meant we gained a ton of benefits of using an orchestrator, while parallel efforts began developing new and future applications that also run in Nomad. Nomad let us enable more self-service around standing up our environments. This reduced load on other teams, which led to faster delivery. Nomad handles placements of the applications in the environment, which was one less concern for the application deployer. By using Nomad, our SRE and platform engineering teams have been able to transition to some of the latest technology management practices as well. We've been able to move from the pets to cattle model, if you will. Underlying VMs are much more generic now, uh, which is great for life cycle and maintenance purposes. We've been able to shift more of our concerns over to helping and enabling our dev teams and other business units at Q2. So let's dive into our environment next and see what that looks like. Today we're running over 7,000 jobs in Nomad across the environments. That translates into over 40,000 tasks across 1,500 VMs. We use most of the HashiStack today. So Nomad, Console, and Vault. And we also use Terraform and Packer for VM management. Most of our Nomad infrastructure lives in on-prem, very traditional, but modern data centers. We do have some workloads with cloud providers as well. We have several Nomad and console clusters across multiple environments, and we federate those between data centers. Our networks are heavily segmented and firewalled, and we align Nomad node classes to these different networks. We make use of the constraint parameter within jobs to match workloads to their appropriate networks. We also use console network segments to align segments to the different networks. This is so we don't send full gossip traffic across firewall boundaries and tiers. Another thing we enjoy about Nomad is we weren't really required to use overlay networks. We mostly use bridge and host mode at the Docker level, which helps keep things simple. Nomad now does have CNI support, so that's actually something we uh, may look into in the future if we need it. One of the cool things about Nomad is you're not limited to running just containers. There's different task drivers available, like Docker, Podman, Firecrackers, and even straight executables. We use the Docker and exec drivers, plus we wrote our own Microsoft IAS Apple driver. This lets us run a huge number of Docker containers on Linux VMs, and for Windows VMs, we run executables and IAS Apples directly on the VMs. We tried starting off with Docker on Windows, but had way too many challenges there, like stability and loss of density. With the app pool driver, we just maintain a fleet of VMs running IIS, plus the Nomad and console agents. And when we submit a job, the artifact stanza pulls down the app pool content and starts it up within IIS. Our next steps are actually moving away from IIS bound applications to straight executables as we move to .NET Core. For Nomad jobs, we generate those through a Jinja templating process and store those in version control. Here's a snippet of a job broken into two images in familiar HCL format. We generate a job file per Nomad region today, but we really look forward to trying out the new multi-region deployments. We treat our physical data centers as Nomad regions, primarily due to how the Nomad leader retrieves vault tokens from the local vault cluster. We leverage template stanzas very heavily within jobs. This lets us keep generic containers and app pools, 
and we layer on the customizations we need at runtime uh, with template stanzas in the job files. This is using console template behind the scenes and that lets you do really nice templating and looping and such. It also lets you pull secrets and certificates from Vault so you don't have to store those directly in job files. With Vault PKI, certificates are pulled dynamically when they're needed and since they're treated as a lease, Nomad and Vault work to rotate and refresh those certificates uh, when they expire automatically. With Nomad, we take advantage of the built-in console and Vault integrations very heavily. All of our jobs have service stanzas and include extra tags and health checks. We leverage Vault integrations with Nomad, so we use a uh, token role instead of Vault, so that within jobs, you can specify Vault policies, and those policies grant you access to specific paths in Vault. That way, you can use template stanzas to pull secrets or certificates straight from Vault. We use performance replication with Vault to replicate secrets between data centers. So teams update secrets in the primary Vault cluster, and those replicate between data centers. We use console and Nomad secret engines in Vault so that operators can log into Vault with their LDAP credentials. They can then request a, a Nomad token and have temporary access to the Nomad clusters. This means that the token is automatically revoked and has a full audit trail behind it. For load balancing, we leverage a few solutions. We primarily use Fabio, which has been really great. And if you're not familiar with Fabio, it's a console native software load balancer. Every service that gets registered in the console has a special tag that Fabio is looking for. So Fabio is watching console. It's looking for all healthy services that also have that extra tag. And it takes that tag and strips off the URI portion and adds a route to its route table. We place several software load balancers in each network listening on standard HTTP ports. Then Fabio routes traffic to the applications which are running on dynamic ports within Nomad. We started off with Fabio as a system job on every node when the environment was small. This worked pretty great at first, but as we began increasing VM counts and the number of Fabios, the sheer number of Fabio instances started putting a high amount of load on console. We moved to a pool of dedicated VMs for running Fabio now in each network, and we just refer to those as ingress nodes. We're also beginning to evaluate another software load balancer called Traffic, which also has console integrations, leverages tags, and has a growing community behind it. And I wanted to show an example of a job with load balancing tags in it, and kind of what that looks like in console in Fabio. Here's what the tags look like in a Nomad job uh, within the service stanza so that there's routes automatically added to Fabio. The first part of the tag is the URI path, and the strip directive removes that URI on the proxied call to the service. Here's the console UI that shows three services are registered for customer one front end. And the Fabio route table shows three routes, each getting about 33% of the traffic. We see a source and destination column. The destination shows the IP address and dynamic port that the uh, container or service is listening on. All the cluster level configurations are managed through Terraform. Nomad ACLs, namespaces, console ACLs, Sentinel policies, vault policies, roles, and engines. That helps keep management practices very familiar and consistent. And we store those all in version control. We use VMware in our data centers for VM hypervisors, and we leverage Terraform for provisioning. We have Packer pipelines that build VM templates, which are about 95% configured. We then use Terraform to build out the Nomad clients and leverage user data and cloud init to lay on the final 5% of the configurations to make provisioning extremely quick and painless. For Windows Nomad clients, we use cloud base init and have the same user data method. This is helping us manage our on-prem environments the same way we're managing cloud resources, which has been really great. When it comes to monitoring, we initially started off with our existing monitoring solutions, but we had some trouble regarding VM changes and rebuilds and trying to follow containers around. Uh, just wasn't really working that great. We very quickly moved to Prometheus and really haven't looked back.
We run Telegraph as a system job on every node with several of its built-in input plugins. And we register Telegraph as a service within console. And Prometheus automatically finds and begins scraping those agents as they come up and move around. This means that VMs come and go and Nomad tasks move around and we automatically scrape them and collect metrics no matter where they end up. We run a couple of standard Prometheus exporters as well, like Blackbox exporter for API monitoring and console exporter for uh, service status changes. And finally, for long-term retention, we use Thanos. Here's an example Prometheus job on the left that connects to console and scrapes any service that's registered called Telegraph. On the right, a job that scrapes any service that's been tagged with scrape metrics. Those are services that our developers write and they automatic, automatically get monitored because of the console service discovery and Prometheus integration. We learned a lot of lessons along the way uh, and really wanted to share some of the job level best practices with you. First off, uh, the restart stanza, you know, that's a setting that uh, we often set the mode to fail uh, because that helps whenever there's node issues like there's a VM that's having some sort of problem or it's degraded in state. Um, if your allocations fail multiple times in a row, that allocation will eventually go to a failed state and Nomad will make sure that it starts up on a healthy node. The check stanza. So we, you know, you want to make sure that every single job has a health check of some kind and uh, ideally maybe a shallow health check if you can, but uh, something that just really tests that the application is working. Check restarts is something uh, that you want to enable because you probably want to restart tasks after a threshold of failed health checks. Reschedule stanza, you may not want the default reschedule mode, which is exponential back off. Um, as those grow between attempts, they could take up to an hour before uh, retrying to restart your job. We often use constant mode with a pretty low delay between attempts, uh, especially on some of our critical jobs. And finally, one of the best resources these days is the HashiCorp Learn site to pick up more best practices on job configurations. You know, really, Nomad has offered Q2 an orchestration solution that's simple, easy to use, and stable. It was the key to solving Q2's deployment problems and has really allowed us to scale for future growth. You can learn more about Q2 on social media and our website, q2.com. Thank you.